What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's Michael here and welcome to Fudge Muppet. It's time for a brand new modded Skyrim build and if you enjoyed our recent Noble Dragon Knight build, you won't find a character more different to him than today's build, the Goutfang Assassin. The Goutfang Assassin is no hero, he's looking out for number one and number one only and if you try to cross his best interests, prepare to be gouged by his impossibly sharp claws. If you survive the puncture wounds and the deep visceral slashes, it will only be a matter of moments before before the poison takes hold, and the noxious concoctions wither you away. This cat uses a combination of the sacred Khajiit martial art known as Gout Fang and toxic substances to defeat his foes. Like a coiled viper, the strike is quick and unavoidable, and often it only takes one successful blow to send you to the grave. Lacking any sense of morality, the Gout Fang assassin takes what he wants and uses his thief skills to stay as far away from the gallows as possible. If this build sounds like the one for you, you'll need the following mods. We have the the Oblivion Artifact Pack for his gear, the alternate start mod to replay his entry into Skyrim, the Imperious Races of Skyrim mod to make our race choice feel different from the other options, the Andromeda Standing Stones of Skyrim mod for a variety of new and unique Standing Stone effects, and finally the all-important Ordinator Perk Overhaul mod which will give us access to our awesome playstyle with overhauled skill trees, notably some much needed love to unarmed combat. Links to all of these mods can be found in the description alongside timestamps for video navigation needs. But with that said, let's get right into it with the Goutfang Assassin's race, standing stone, and stats. So the Goutfang Assassin is a Khajiit, obviously, and starts the game with 90 base health, 105 magicka, 105 stamina, 0.5% health regen per second, 3.125% magicka regen, 5.25% stamina regen, and 300 carry weight. He also has the following racial abilities. There's feline agility, which allows you to move faster and sprint faster at the cost of more stamina. There's Prowl, which allows you to sneak silently and perform power leaps while sneaking. There's Rawlith Kaj, which grants claw power attacks bonus damage based on stamina. And then Perception, which unlocks after acquiring 50,000 lifetime gold. This allows you to improve night vision and dampen non-essential sounds at will. The Goutfang Assassin will use the Shadow Stone, which has three useful abilities. Blur, grants 20% extra movement speed in combat, hide in shadows, makes sneaking and sneak attacks 20% more effective near walls or obstacles, and shadow step allows you to expend 50 points of stamina to dash to nearby targets within 75 feet. As for stats, we'll be putting 50% into health to stay alive in spite of weak armor, but no more is needed as this is predominantly a sneak build. We often won't give our enemies a chance to attack us, then put 50% into stamina for increased unarmed attack damage, which is very important, more sprinting, sneak rolls, power attacks, and all of that good stuff. Now for the backstory. The Goutfang Assassin was born in the dense jungles of the Tenmar Forest, to the north and west of Senchal in the province of Elsewhere. The home of the Khajiit is considered one of the most mysterious and exotic locations in all of Tamriel, and the Tenmar Forest is partly to blame for such perceptions. Here the sentient breeds of Khajiit mesh with the wildlife in a bizarre ecosystem. The innumerable trees trees here have flourished without the guiding hands of mortals, and as they reach into the sky, they constantly encroach on one another's space, creating a labyrinth of vines and boughs that end in an impenetrable canopy blocking the sun from their domain. Living amongst the branches, a plethora of Khajiit breeds, mostly the quadrupedal cheetah-like breed of Daggy and Daggy Rat, hold dominion. Down on the marshy ground, tangles of mangroves and rich fertile soil prosper. This is where the famous moon sugar plantations can be found. The Goutfang Assassin grew up among the sugarcane groves, working the fields for his father and uncle who owned the moon sugar plantation. As a child, the assassin would toil away in the humidity, listening to the raucous bustle of the forest life, all while chewing a stalk of the good stuff. He had quite the sweet tooth, and chewing the sugarcane made him euphoric. He worked without a care in the world, and lived in constant awe of his surroundings. When he finished his work, he would sharpen his claws on the bark of the tall trees, before climbing up to the plain of the daggy. Khajiit. Here, where the bipedal humanoid Cafe Khajiit were practically aliens, the Goutfang assassin would nestle amidst the branches and let the moon sugar take him into a deep narcotic sleep. He loved the tranquility the canopy provided. When he was old enough, his father and uncle entrusted him with making the ride to Central, the busy seaport of elsewhere. His colleague, Ascench Khajiit, carried the Goutfang assassin and two heavy packs of moon sugar and rode them with haste into the city. Moon sugar was a staple to the Khajiit, 
but to distant travelers, it was an exotic and incredibly powerful drug, even before refinement. The men and myrrh in the markets were not accustomed to the fresh Tenma moon sugar, and the Gout Feng lined his pockets with foreign gold. There was one other major benefit about making the trek to Sencha. The cities of Pelotine had the very best skooma dens, and the refined version of moon sugar was a necessity now that he was an adult. Chewing the cane wasn't potent enough to bring him that same euphoria. That night, he left the skooma den with slightly lighter pockets, but nothing his family would notice. The narrow alleyways leading out and towards the inn were eerily quiet. From the shadows, a Cafe Rutkajit, the breed slightly larger than his own, emerged. He was bulky and a foot in height taller than the Gout Fang, and he was missing his left eye. The Gout Fang assassin was high and unprepared for the assault. He fell to the ground beneath a crunching blow from the attacker's clenched paw, and when he came to, his pockets were empty. The Gout Fang assassin said nothing to his mount on the return trip through the outskirts of the Tenma. He was terrified of what his father would do when he heard his son had returned empty-handed. The gold he lost could have sustained them for many moons. They passed the monastery a short ways off the road, and the Gout Fang wanted to investigate. He sent the Sench mount on ahead, saying he just needed to relieve himself, but he had no intention of returning to his plantation. He instead wandered through the fields to the distant monastery. When he entered the grounds of the abbey, he was taken aback by the sheer lack of sounds. Here the sky was open and unimpeded by the few sparse trees on the outer rims of the forest. In the courtyard, Khajiit monks of all breeds sat cross-legged or flat for the quadrupeds, and they meditated in complete silence. He tried to remain quiet as he wandered around the grounds. All around them, nightshade flowers grew. It gave a vibrant yet luxuriating glow to the place. That would have been how they funded the upkeep of the establishment. Nightshade was quite a valuable commodity in the cities. Inside one large open monastery building, various bipedal breeds practiced a bizarre martial art. It was unlike anything he'd seen in his life. The monks had abnormally sharp claws, and as they sparred, they wrapped them in fabric to prevent wounding one another. The style was jarringly rhythmic, sporadic swipes interlaced with the occasional kick, but the entire martial art seemed focused around the claws. He soon learned that this style was called Gout Fang, and the resident master welcomed him into the ranks despite not knowing him. The assassin decided to stay. He was still in pain from his attack the previous night, and this was his chance to start anew, free from the consequences of his failures and with the unique opportunity to learn to protect himself from a willing master. He meditated for six hours each day, reaching a spiritual state through mindfulness without the need for moon sugar. He grew his claws as long as they could grow until they curved outwards from his paws like great pointed scythes. He trained hours, sometimes even days on end, solely dedicated to honing his hand-to-hand -hand proficiency. He became an individual of extreme focus and unrivaled ferocity while training under the monks of the monastery. He was a natural. That said, the Gout Feng assassin did not find inner peace. He was much more spiritual, yes, but his ego was still well and truly intact. Some years later, after somewhat mastering the art of Gout Feng, the assassin was trusted to take part in the upkeep of the monastery. He volunteered to travel back to Senchal to sell their nightshade, telling the monks he had much experience with bartering as a youth. The real reason for his return, however, was revenge. If the one-eyed Cafe Rut still resided in Senchal, the Gout Feng assassin would track him down, and it was not a difficult task. Describing the prominent feature of the Khajiit to locals had led him to a large, sketchy skooma den. On his way there, he picked up a potent poison from a shady merchant. Inside, through the smoky haze, he found his target sprawled out with a pipe between his lips. To provoke, he took the pipe and smashed it against One Eye's face. Furious, One Eye got to his feet and lashed out at the Gout Fang assassin. The assassin crouched beneath the blow and swiped his claws across One Eye's throat, killing him instantly. His claws were oozing with the poison he had just purchased, giving the swipe a far more fatal touch, an idea the other monks would probably never consider. As he attempted to leave, a dozen Khajiit blocked his escape. The establishment, it turned out, belonged to a rich drug trafficker. He was dragged before the boss and commended for his efforts. Such efficient killing was perfect for his ranks, and the Gout Feng assassin was hired as muscle, taking the place of old One-Eye. For the next few years, he sailed the Topple Sea and the seas beyond. They trafficked Skooma to Solrest, Haven, South Point, Rimen, Leowin, even to Breville. The Gout Feng assassin made more money than he could spend in nine lifetimes. Only during a dead drop in Breville, he and his men were busted. They scattered and the Gout Feng assassin managed to escape the chasing Imperial Guards. In order to avoid detection, he hid among the shanties in the heights of the city, until he noticed a Khajiit caravan passing outside the city walls.
walls. With them, he could go undetected. To the Imperials, he would just be another cat, so he joined them in their travels, working as a caravan guard for their trip to Skyrim. After taking the Khajiit caravan guard alternate start, we will join the Goutfang assassin far enough from the Empire's reach to guarantee his safety from arrest. With the knowledge that he would not see the inside of a jail cell, he is free to go back to his not quite morally pure deeds. He's a long way from Senshal, his boss, and his wealth, and the Empire's wanted list lies between him and home, so he will have to start from scratch if he wants to arouse no suspicion. Fortunately, the Goutfang assassin is incredibly capable of defending himself, and he has a knack for acquiring wealth. He will gravitate towards the Dark Brotherhood and the Thieves Guild quickly, and he will excel in their ranks. Due to his seemingly non-existent sense of morality, which developed well after leaving the monastery, nothing will stand between him and his pay. He will humor the Daedra and accept the most questionable quests, so long as he has something to gain from the arrangement, his claws can be used to serve the highest bidder. Molag Bao's got some evil plans, well a poison clawed feline killer is quite the contractor to hire. Despite all of this, he does have some reverence for the Khajiiti pantheon. He prays before the moons and will not betray Daedra like Azura, for example, even if there are better awards on the table. But other than that, everything is fair game. While this build uses the martial art of Gout Fang in combination with poisoning his claws ahead of combat scenarios, we will roleplay this poisoning process in our heads. In reality, the poisoned claws come from a perk in the light armor skill tree, but we still do use alchemy for making potions. As I said, the Dark Brotherhood and the Thieves Guild are his go-to factions. He's as silent as a monk and has naturally cushioned footsteps, so he will fit right in as a thief. And what would impress the Lord of the Void, Sithis, more than brutally carving victims down with poisoned scythe-like claws? The main quest line and the Dragonborn DLC are definitely solid options. He's not particularly fussed about saving Skyrim, nor does he care much for the blades, but ancient, untapped powers are hard to pass up. You can also do the Dawnguard DLC if you're so inclined, but the Dawnguard don't really pay enough to recruit you. They're the moral types who think doing the right thing is incentive enough. The Gapfang Assassin can punish that foolishness by siding with the Volgahar vampires and bargaining his services for their secret vampire powers. We'll leave your Dawnguard choice up to you, but we didn't think this build needed to be played as a vampire permanently, so you could always cure that afterwards. But with the backstory, roleplaying, and faction choices done, let's take a look at the Goutfang Assassin's skills, perks, and his playstyle. The main skills for the build are going to be Light Armor, Sneak, Lockpicking, Pickpocket, and Alchemy. Unarmed isn't a skill, but we will be focusing heavily on it through the Light Armor skill tree and the Ordinator perk overhaul. Shouts are not essential, but they're definitely an option if you'd like. Shouts like Become Ethereal, for example, won't meddle with your combat style, but will provide you with an escape should you get overwhelmed in battle. But with that said, let's take a look at these essential perks. Light Armor is up first, and this skill is crucial for two reasons. Firstly, do you think the monks mastered the art of Gout Fang in heavy armor? No chance. They were either half-naked or robed, and the Gout Fang Assassin fights with similar freedom of movement. Second, Light Armor is basically our unarmed skill thanks to the Ordinator perk overhaul. From the Light Armor skill tree, take Light Armor Mastery 2 out of 2, Iron Fist 3 out of 3, Sweeping Wind, Rushing Tide, Breaking Waves, and Hissing Dragon Picking Poison. With the branch starting with Iron Fist, your unarmed combat will be considerably more effective. Iron Fist grants you a boost to unarmed damage equal to 25% of your current stamina, which is why stamina is so important for this build. Plus, using unarmed combat will increase your Light Armor skill. Sweeping Wind makes your unarmed attacks an additional 25% more effective. Rushing Tide grants 10% increased stamina regen and 5% more movement speed for 8 seconds, stacking whenever you land an unarmed strike. But Hissing Dragon is the most crucial perk for the Goutfang Assassin and the key to our playstyle. You may choose one damage type, in our case it's Poison, and from that point on, unarmed attacks unleash a shockwave that deals the chosen damage type to targets in front of you. The value of stealth is clear to anyone who chooses to live life under the radar, and for the Goutfang Assassin, the ability to tread lightly is what stands between him and the inside of a jail cell. From the Sneak skill tree, go for Sneak Mastery 2 out of 2, Spot Detection, Light Foot, Silent Roll, Dynamic Entry, Dodge Roll, Greased Lightning, Fog of War, Right Behind You, Disengage, Clean Escape, Behind Enemy Lines, Shadow Warrior, Sneak Attack, Problem Solver, and Cloak and Dagger. Right Behind You is great for getting close to your targets, as if you are within 30 feet, your sneaking will be 15% better and subsequently 30% better 
when within 15 feet. Disengage grants you the unique power to literally disengage all alerted targets around you, giving you the chance to escape or attempt stealth again. Shadow Warrior works much like the vanilla perk, only less overpowered. Crouching in combat will turn you invisible for two seconds, giving you a brief window to land a sneak attack on a previously alerted foe. This has an eight second cooldown. Cloak and Dagger enhances this perk, as breaking invisibility with a power attack guarantees a critical strike worth 50% more crit damage. He is deadly in close quarters, and he has the soft footsteps that allow him to get up close to anyone he wishes. What skills could complement those more than lockpicking and pickpocket? These skills will make the Gatfang Assassin a very rich cat. From the lockpicking skill tree, take both ranks of lockpicking mastery, and from the pickpocket skill tree, take pickpocket mastery 2 out of 2, as well as blood money. So you're going to get a lot of benefit from both of these skills without actually needing to invest heaps of perks into them. Blood money will add more gold between 10 to 100 pieces if you kill a foe in an especially violent fashion. Finally, we have alchemy. To some, alchemy is a relaxing pastime. To others, it is a profitable trade or a cure to their ailments. But to the Gatfang assassin, it's what makes him the most lethal assassin to leave the land of elsewhere. He has 10 impossibly sharp daggers built into his flesh. Each of them is as venomous as a viper. This is, of course, simply our role playing and is facilitated through the light armor perks I mentioned, as we won't actually be brewing poisons. However, we've still chosen alchemy for role playing and to give us a variety of invaluable potions. From the alchemy skill tree, grab alchemy mastery 2 out of 2, physician picking stamina, advanced lab, lab skeever, double toil and trouble, experimenter, green thumb, pure mixture, stimulants, crimson haze, maynad, witch master, chymical wedding, and that which does not kill you. These perks will improve the quality of your created poisons and potions. Maynad will reward you for consistent use of potions, as while under the effects of any beneficial potion, your magicka and stamina will be increased increased by 50 points. However, they will be decreased by 25 points when not under their effects. With Witch Master and Chymical Wedding, you'll have some interesting random effects whenever using potions. You'll have a 50% chance of receiving a powerful side effect randomly chosen from 40 beneficial possible effects. And each of these effects has a 50% chance to cause an additional side effect of their own. With all of this in mind, let's go over how the Gatfang Assassin will play in combat. The first thing you'll want to do is add our choice of gauntlets to your favorites list, as these will be worn on and off in combat, so you'll want to hotkey it. We roleplay that our claws stick through the fingertips of the gauntlets, of course, so they can be poisoned and pierce the skin of our enemies. These gauntlets will make you invisible, and are therefore more valuable while sneaking than in open combat. This is a sneak unarmed playstyle. At the beginning of battle, you'll want to make the most of your sleuthing skills, taking down isolated foes one by one, but when you are discovered, you can break out the art of Gout Fang. You remember how I described the style. It's arrhythmic and unpredictable. Just let loose and swipe relentlessly at your foes, causing waves of poison to rot away at anyone who comes close, and due to our perks, making our movement speed faster and faster. You can quick equip your gauntlets to go invisible whenever you want, and due to the bonuses we get from having high stamina, using potions that restore stamina and increase base stamina are very helpful. Mix in some of your racial and stone powers like your shadow step lunge and your prowl power leap when necessary for a really animalistic fighting style. When tomb raiding, implement your lockpicking skill to get you the best loot. And when you want some extra gold and there's some victims nearby, try pickpocketing. This Khajiit could use his claws to slice off someone's necklace without them even knowing. As for gear, the Gautfang Assassin will have a pretty simple setup. You'll want a trusty pair of leather boots, some ragged trousers, then the Hands of Midnight from the Oblivion Artifact Pack mod. These gauntlets can be found at Hag's End next to the Assassin of Old. These gauntlets will make you invisible for 7 120 seconds when worn. Your health, stamina, and magicka recover slower during the day when worn, but your unarmed damage will be 10 points higher and you'll move silently. When you want to recover stamina faster during the day, simply remove the gauntlets or just use a potion. Find any necklace you can with a beneficial enchantment like Fortify Sneak, and then use the Ring of the Grey from the Oblivion Artifact Pack. This can be found in the Rift in Jail sewers and is found in a coin purse on the ground. With this ring, your poison resistance will be 50% higher, your stamina regen will be 20% higher, not important here but bows will do 25% more damage, lockpicking is 30% easier which is great and sneaking is 25% better. In addition to all of this, you're muffled and you can detect nearby living creatures. Lastly and very importantly, potions. The key potion will be fortify stamina
stamina for not only increased stamina, but improved unarmed attack damage. Then you can use potions like health and stamina regen, or simply potions that restore the lowered stats. Resistance to elements potions are helpful too, especially against mages. And then any utility potions like water breathing or cure disease should be carried for times of need. Remember, our claws are poisoned thanks to the light armor perk, not from the application of actual alchemical poisons. And there you have it, guys. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and give the video a like if you enjoyed the Gatfang Assassin. Don't forget that our mod list, our social media links, and timestamps for video navigation can all be found in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. My name is Michael, and I look forward to nerding out with you again very soon.